I'd imagine absolutely everyone who's listening to this or watching this is aware already. Um, I have three kids and my kids go to a Christian school and this particular one hit home hard and really they all do. Um, I hope you're like me that you have not become numb to this, especially as an American where this is a, unfortunately a frequent occurrence. Um, and look, more details are coming out and I don't want to speculate too much on the details because things are likely to change. And I'm not jumping on this just because it's a recent story or something that you might even care to hear my opinion on. But in the wake of this, really my only thought is this YouTube channel, the podcast that's associated with it, the mission that I'm a part of, our heart is to sincerely and authentically follow Jesus. And our heart is to share the love of Jesus outside of the church. And all I really ask is that if you're a fan of this or you're someone who is a partner with us in this mission, or whether you're a regular listener of our podcast or this YouTube channel, I think we all need to pause when something like this happens. And before jumping to our typical responses or our particular ideological camps or political perspective, because I know we all have them, I have them, um, I think we as followers of Jesus and those who are frequent listeners of this content, um, you know where my commitment lies and what I would challenge you with and what I'm challenging myself with is to say, Jesus, what would you have me do? Not Republican Party, what would you have me do? Or Democratic Party, would you have me do? Or not just immediately jump to the societal uh, aspects of this conversation or the political aspects of this conversation, but to simply say, what would you have me do as a follower of Jesus? Look, if I say that the Bible is my ultimate authority, if I say that my allegiance is to Jesus above all things, then that should trump any other perspective, any other political perspective, anything my family has taught me, anything my culture has taught me. I should be willing to throw all of that aside, put all of that out, and simply ask the question, Jesus, how would you respond? Look, obviously, we live in a horribly wicked world um, where bad things happen, things that are inexplicable, things that we can't even really comprehend. And that's just going to be the way it is. But I don't think that allows for us to be apathetic. Uh, I don't think Jesus displayed apathy. He came and he gave up his life. He subverted the system. He did things in a totally new way, um, not the ways of the world. He He flipped the whole thing upside down on his head. And I don't really have the answer for this very complex situation, but all I want to encourage you and myself to do is to stop and to say, Jesus, what would you have me do? What is your heart towards the world? What is your heart towards my enemies? What is your heart towards violence, towards self-defense, towards how I should view my security and my fate and how to protect my family? Jesus, let your wisdom and your guidance be first. Yes, there were no guns in the New Testament. But I think Jesus is absolutely speaking in a relevant way to this issue if we would have open hearts and ears to hear and would allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. So again, I'm not saying I have the answers other than we need to be busy preaching the gospel, other than we need to be busy demonstrating the radical love of Jesus with the people around us, other than we need to be recognizing that we need rescuing from this dark and horrible world, honestly both in this life and beyond it. Um, it should increase our urgency. Um, but again, let me just stress, we need to be looking to Jesus for our answers, not our political parties, not our families, not our cultures, not our countries. But what would he have us do? Because I believe he'd want to speak at a tragic time like this.